But let's prepare ourselves to worship. Let's calm our minds. Let's open our hearts to the Spirit of God. Do not be weary in doing what is right, for by your endurance you will gain your souls. We light this Christ candle, acknowledging that God in Christ is present with us right now in this very place, in this very moment in time, and will be with us forever. Please join me in the call to worship. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Worship God with shouts of joy. Worship God with songs of gladness. Worship God with hope and love. Sing praises to God and sing praises. Worship God in spirit and in truth. Let's sing our first hymn from Voices United 245. Praise the Lord with the sound of trumpet. Please join me in the opening prayer. God of hope and promise, speak again your words of life and death, for reports of violence and bloodshed are all around us. In a world where the oppressed have nowhere to turn, bless us anew with visions of heavenly shalom that the world may be healed and your people may live in safety and peace. Teach us the joy of sharing simple acts of kindness and heartful gifts of tender mercy, that we may be people of your kingdom and children of your love. Amen. The choir now has an anthem titled, We Are a Rainbow.
Please join me in the prayer of confession. Eternal God, your anger may last for a moment, but your mercy endures for a lifetime. We come before you with joyful hearts, longing to draw living water from the well of your salvation. We come this day to worship with thankful spirits, yearning to abide in the new earth you are creating in our midst. As we sing your praises, touch us with the love of your new heaven, that we may be fit to dwell in your peaceable kingdom. Amen. Through Christ, the wellspring of our salvation, we are washed in the waters of forgiveness and grace. Through your endurance, you will gain your souls. Amen. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountains, says the Lord. The one who's making all things new calls us to the lives of peace and harmony. Turn and greet one another in the spirit of reconciliation and unity as we pass the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. So our, uh, our hymn is uh, from Voices United 639, One More Step Along the World I Go. We'll allow the kids to go out, and I invite Hillary to come up and uh, do the scripture reading, please. Our first reading this morning is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 to 13. Warning against idleness. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command, anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. Second reading is from Luke 21, verses 5 to 19. The destruction of the temple foretold. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. Signs and persecutions. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify, so make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The word of the Lord. And so I'll invite Julie Hutton up for the message. Good morning again. Could you please join me in prayer? God, you are love. You are the love in families. You are the love between friends. You are the love that makes all people of the earth one family. We give thanks for love, we give thanks for families, and we give thanks for you. Help us to love one another as you love us. Amen. I'd like to thank you for allowing me to be here today. Um, I do come from Minidosa. I belong to the Minidosa United Church. And um, I just want to tell you that I will be talking about uh, my children a lot during my um, uh, message today. And just so that you know, they range from 29 to 36. So when I'm talking about children, sometimes it's the older children and sometimes it's the younger children. So um, just that heads up on that one. 
So if you've been following the lectionary in the last um, little while, you will have been reading about Paul and the ministry that he was trying to establish in Philippi. When he was forced to leave his home because of opposition to this ministry, he wrote letters to the Philippians, and these letters became two books in the Bible. Also in these letters, Paul praises the Christian people for their faith and love. He reminds them about a love that pleases God and urges them to be joyful always while waiting for the return of the Messiah. As I begin my reflection today, my hope is that the spirit working in this message will find a place within each one of us today to take with us on our journey when we leave this place. So the letter I am going to share with you today was written to me uh, approximately seven years ago. It starts off, Mom, I'm going to tell you now that this is a very deep, personal, heavy, and long letter, but please read to the end. Also know now that I am safe and good. Things are happening for me because of writing this letter. In our society, everything has been made to seem black or white, either or, one thing or another. Our gender is placed upon us at birth, sometimes even before with the first thing people want to know is if it's a boy or a girl. For some reason, that has come to be one of the most important things to know about a person. But it really is not that simple. I've lived my life being asked, are you a boy or a girl? Or is that a boy or a girl? So many whispers, stares, second glances, and rude remarks that make fun of or judge me and my identity and gender presentation. Although the feelings of shame, guilt, and fear have been present within myself over the years, I have come to a point in my life where I need to change for myself, not for others. I am telling you this because this is for my happiness and for my comfort. This is for my life. I cannot keep living dishonestly with myself. I need to be more comfortable in who I am, who I want to be. I am still the same person you've always known, your child, your family, an athlete, a jokester, the child who spent more time outside with elderly neighbors than most, a person who cherishes every moment spent with my family. The only thing that will be changing is my physical appearance and the way people will perceive me. Mom, you are the person I look up to most in this world. You continually go beyond limits to make us happy, and to help us with whatever we need. I really just want to be able to be honest with you. I also want you to know that I do not in any way mean any disrespect to you for the choices you made for me over the years. Your friend Kathy told me once, speaking about you, that your children were everything to you. We mean the world to you. Mom, you mean the world to me. I love you. So how could I even begin to think that my child was being disrespectful to me? My child who had been disrespected by so many, so much of their life. Really, all I could do was be even more proud of a child who wanted to become their authentic self and at the same time still be my child, a jokester, 
an athlete, the child who spent more time outside with elderly neighbors, the person who loved their family and whose family's love for one another is beyond measure. If only life was just that easy. My son is transgender. Thinking back in time and thinking about tiny from the story I shared with the children this morning, I am wondering if you might imagine just for one minute, or perhaps some of you share similar experiences already, what it would be like to watch a young child, your child, being bullied, being called names by some, being totally ignored by so many others, being mistaken for the boy who caused the trouble and suffering detention because teachers and administration didn't believe the truth. Then, as a teen, being yelled at by other kids' parents during soccer matches and being verbally abused by a basketball coach from another team. How does someone, a parent, comfort a child when their heart is breaking, not knowing what to do? By the time I received this letter, Ray, the name of my son, this, the name that he's chosen for their own, was attending university. And again, I could not help but worry about so many other things that could go wrong for Ray. For a young adult, bullying, cruelty, and visible hatred was a whole new ball game, especially for a 20-year-old transgender individual. And incidentally, about a year before Ray came out as transgender, my son Aaron came out to our family as gay. So I was already familiar with the LGBTQ community and how some people in this community are treated, sometimes by those who loved them. And I am using that word in the past tense. And sometimes by total strangers. I attended my first transgender day of remembrance service not long after Ray came out. There, I heard a young transgender individual tell their story, and I realized that this story had so many similarities to Ray's story. And not only Ray's story, but many, many other trans persons' stories as well. And although many of the reasons for coming out were much the same, the support and loving ending for others was not. And that wasn't all I heard that day. I learned that for generations, transgender individuals have suffered various forms of abuse and even death for challenging the views, notions, and stereotypes around male and female identity. I heard the names read and watched candles lit for those recorded deaths of trans individuals, mostly trans women, mostly women of color, that year. And by the way, the statistics don't include suicides, the missing and or suspected murder of trans individuals, or those not ever recorded. And these would be the trans individuals that died at the hands of someone else due to transphobia and who were never even missed. In 2018 alone, 369 names were read and their lives remembered. This brought the total of recorded deaths in 72 countries to 2,982 from 2008 to 2018. Every year, November 20th is set aside as Transgender Day of Remembrance. Brandon has held a day of remembrance for many years, and this year is no exception. The service is open to all. It is held over the lunch hours so that people can attend during their lunch break. 
It's held at Knox United Church, which is in a central location and close to Brandon University in hopes that students from there will attend. And a candlelight vigil is held in the evening so that others may attend that can't make lunch hour work. So in saying all of this, this is why Transgender Day of Remembrance is important. It's a time for reflection. The day encourages us to stop and reflect on the transgender community, specifically the abuse many of them face as they attempt to lead their everyday lives. It's also meant to help spark transgender advocacy, support, and change everywhere. It encourages empathy. This day offers the opportunity for others to better understand the stigma, discrimination, and barriers that many transgender people face. This understanding can lead to deeper empathy and can remind us that we are all more alike than we are different. It offers hope. Transgender Day of Remembrance invites communities to come together and unify against the powers of hate and fear. A number of years ago, I joined the Ad Hoc Affirming Committee at Minidosa United Church, who became an affirming community of faith in June 2014. When I lived in Brandon for a few years, I immediately came on board with Knox United's Affirm Committee and assisted with many events sponsored by Knox. I have spoken to others openly about the importance of what it means to be affirming, and I promote acceptance of all in my daily life in hopes that others will do the same. I am now currently enrolled in the Licensed Lay Leader Program and taking time to better understand what God expects from me. The unit I'm currently registered in is called Prayers and Music and Pentecost. The first question to consider in my first assignment was, what fuels your personal prayer life? So after my research and personal reflection, from what I read and what I believe, this was my answer. Pentecost, for me, is a time when the Holy Spirit fills us and we are amazed. Music, to me, is a form of prayer. And music can also fill me up and amaze me. That was an amazing piece of uh, music this morning. Thank you so much for that. And prayer. I use prayer when I'm driving to work in the morning, standing at the kitchen sink, watching my kids play outside in the backyard. I use prayer when I reflect on conversations I've had with people during the day. I use prayer when I listen to the news or read the headlines on the daily news posts. I intentionally use prayer when any form of what I deem a crisis is happening in my life or someone's life that is close to me. I've learned that prayer doesn't have to be complicated and that prayer goes hand in hand with faith. When I think about all the personal prayers I have spoken and continue to speak about the acceptance of others, it's the faith and strength from the Holy Spirit that fuels my personal prayer life. And what also truly amazes me is that from the time I have spent with my children and my grandchildren, and from the time I have spent with other children, and from the time I have spent with other parents and community members, I believe there are many more amazing possibilities for all people. Not only for those who live their lives with others in the LGBT community, not only for those of color or creed, not only for those who have limited abilities, not only for those with a different social status, and not only for those who are members of affirming communities of faith, but for all, for everyone, everywhere. 
I see this amazing way of accepting others becoming the norm. So why not risk it all and see everyone as an equal for who they are and how they live their lives? In August 2013, Clay Gentry wrote these words to address Paul's exhortation, do not grow weary in doing good, which was verse 13 from this morning's scripture reading. And he says, The worst enemy of enthusiasm is weariness, that tired feeling that results from having run out of strength, patience, and endurance. All of us have been there. We decide to start something great and wonderful, and then in a matter of a few days or weeks or months, we are tired of it. What once was a joy has now become a wearisome burden. Vacationers get tired of rest. Millionaires get tired of money. Kids get tired of toys. And Christians get tired of doing good. What is true in the 21st century was true in the 1st century. Christians must battle against the weariness associated with doing good. And Frank Crouch's comments regarding the same passage Rather than advising us to pursue ways to stop ourselves from helping others in need or limiting our help only to those who prove they deserve it, Paul ends by tilting suddenly over to the other end of the giving continuum. He ultimately calls on the Thessalonians and us today to hold some combination of the following as our ethical goal. Don't get rid of doing what is right. Don't get sick of doing good. Keep on keeping on in doing good things. Never stop lifting up those around you if you can. Don't ever give up on doing good. Do whatever good you can, whenever you can, wherever you can, and in whatever ways you can, even if you don't have to. Marion Wright Edelman, born June 6, 1939, is an American activist for children's rights. She has been an advocate for disadvantaged Americans for her entire professional life. She is president and founder of the Children's Defense Fund, and she states, when Jesus Christ asked little children to come to him, he didn't say only rich children or white children or children with two-parent families or children who didn't have a mental or physical handicap. He said, let all children come unto me. And I say, my children, your children, all children deserve the respect, the unconditional love, and the opportunity to live their lives without judgment or feelings of shame, guilt, and fear. So you may have realized by now that my friend Kathy was right. My children are everything to me. My four children, my three grandchildren, my children's partners, my family by extension, all their pets, the whole enchilada. And these words, Mom, I am still the same person you've always known, your child, your family, an athlete, a jokester the child who spent more time outside with elderly neighbors than most. These words, they will never be forgotten. As I light a candle for hope and peace today, I would like to end uh, my message today with the words that Paul used when he signed all of his letters.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thanks so much, Julie, for that amazing message, sharing yours, Ray's, your family's story. Um, and it's not by accident that we've invited Julie here today. Uh, it's not a random Sunday, you know, and as uh, Transgender Day of Remembrance is the 20th, this coming Wednesday, um, we're reminded that those uh, transge transgender individuals are astronomically higher chances of being murdered uh, than the average person. And to hear uh, how many uh, pass in, in, the, in, the, in a year or, or, uh, or year to date uh, from the countries that report this, it's, uh, it's truly heartbreaking. And so uh, uh, it's, it's a lovely service at, uh, at Knox, as Julie said, in the noon hour. If you have a chance, check it out. Um, but as we live as disciples of Jesus who, who asks us not to love some of our neighbors, we are asked to love all of our neighbors. Let us sing our next hymn, I Have Called You By Your Name, from uh, More Voices 161. We have a video for Minutes for Mission today called Adventure Camp. The GO Project has been offering programs for children and youth for over 10 years in many parts of Canada. High Country United Church in Orangeville, Ontario worked with the GO Project to create an adventure camp for children grades 2 to 7. Children explore their faith and justice through unique service projects. One program involved shopping at a local grocery store and then delivering the food and diapers to the Orangeville Food Bank. 
The Goal Project tries to bring together the two fundamental aspects of our Christian faith, which is the love of God and the love of neighbor. So we do that in an intentional way, trying to get kids in on the mission that God is already doing in our community and discerning how we might be called to be the hands and feet of the risen Christ in our communities and to do that in a way that is faithful and exciting and vibrant and vital. We do anything from crafts to songs to worship to bread baking to working at food banks to helping out in community gardens to seeing all the different types of work that's going on in our community and wondering how God is helping us to help them. What Dufferin County does very, very well is everybody shares together in Dufferin County. take them off when you put just a little bit of pressure and they pull right off then you know they're done uh -huh. okay. I've learned that Orangeville has a community garden I've learned where the food bank is if people need food they can go there they get like 50 points each month and they can spend the 50 points, like dollars. In my high school, I know that there's lots of different types of people. And so if, for example, somebody doesn't know where the food bank is and they might need access to that, I can let them know about that. Some people aren't that rich and they don't have a lot of food, so they might not live through the winter or the summer. So I want to at least help them live. Your gifts to the mission and service of the United Church of Canada help to support programs like this one. Thank you, and please, continue to give. We will now receive the offering. God of visions and dreams, as we seek to make a difference in our world, 
Teach us anew that your love makes all things possible, working within our offerings this day, that they may be signs of our commitment to dream your dreams and to bring your vision for our world to life. Work within these gifts that those who have lost hope for a better future may find all they need to live with passion and purpose. Amen. So during our prayers for the people today, we'll be, uh, we have a couple of uh, interludes where we'll be singing from Voices United 400, Lord, listen to your children praying, and um, the words will appear on the screen. Let us pray. Living Christ, from the stories about your ministry, we know you meant both struggle and joy. Some people understood you and others didn't. Some people responded to your words with commitment, others with puzzlement, and still others turned away. We know both struggle and joy in our lives and ministries too. This day we place into your hands all our hopes and our struggles. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Send us power, send us grace. All that we are, O Lord, and all that we do, we place into your hands. Everything we work for and everything we hope for, <clears throat> we place into your hands. The choices we face and the responsibilities we bear, we place into your hands. The troubles that weary us and the thoughts that puzzle us, we place into your hands. Each situation and each person that we pray for, we place into your hands. Living, loving Christ, source of the power and peace we long for, fill us with the strength and hope we need to walk with you each day. For it is as your followers we dare to pray, our Mother and our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Let us sing our last hymn from Voices United 82, A Light is Gleaming.
As we go, may love call us to be curious about the realities of others' experiences. As we go, may love call us to celebrate our differences. As we go, may love call us to celebrate our differences.